Hello and welcome to Middle Eastern Thursday. So as you may recall, during the last two hauls that we've had here on the channel, I've shared with you a total of 21 fragrances. And today what I wanted to do is I wanted to share with you out of those 21 fragrances, I wanted to tell you after testing and after using them for a bit, you know, which ones are my top five favorites. So what I'm going to do today is, of course, I'm going to share with you the five fragrances and as I do so, I will of course review them for you and I will also rank them. So I will be sharing from my least favorite to my most favorite. But I do want you to know that all of the fragrances of the past two hauls are really, really good fragrances and selecting just five to bring to you today was quite difficult. But I know that you're going to ask me, okay, Arahi, so which one is your favorite? Because you can't love them all. But I am telling you, if you look at those past two haul videos, those fragrances are really, really good fragrances. But these five that I'm going to share with you today are definitely my top favorites. I also wanted to remind you that these fragrances have not had a chance to macerate for months at a time. So at this point, whatever I share with you today is still subject to a bit of change in the future, depending on how the fragrance evolves as a result of maceration. But before we jump right in, if this is your first time here, I'm Arahi. And I'm your fragrance concierge because I am totally committed to creating the best fragrance experience for you. I upload videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Sundays, and sometimes you even get a bonus video for the week. If that sounds like the type of content that you're interested in and like a good plan, then please consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget, leave a comment. Let's go. All right, guys. So there's a couple of things that I also wanted to make sure you knew. So as part of the 21 fragrances that we hauled in those past two haul videos, there were around five, uh, if I remember correctly, Ahmed Al Maghribi fragrances. And I excluded those five fragrances from picking my top five favorites because moving forward, when I do those uh, Middle Eastern luxury fragrance videos, I will be incorporating Ahmed Al Maghribi fragrances to those videos because I really do feel that his fragrances are quite special. So I am going to include them with all of the other luxury Middle Eastern fragrances. The other thing that I wanted to share with you is that the five fragrances that I'm going to be sharing with you today were indeed inspired by another fragrance. And of course, as I go through them, I will be sharing with you that information. But today, I'm not going to focus on telling you what percent of this fragrance is really the same as the OG fragrance that it was inspired by. Because of course, you know, we have another series here on the channel going on where I take the time to really compare it directly to the OG fragrance. So expect to see these five fragrances in one of those upcoming videos. So the first fragrance that I'm going to share with you today is a Cad Lash fragrance. And this fragrance was inspired by Ramon Monegal's Flamenco. Now, if you've been following or been with me for a while, you know that Flamenco is a fragrance that I've discussed here on the channel multiple times because I absolutely love it. Flamenco is one of those fragrances that is in my long list of fragrances for life. I absolutely love it. It's a fragrance that is all about passion. It's a very sexy fragrance, but I feel that it is all about the passion, kind of like the passion that when you watch a flamenco dancer, you definitely pick up on. And the fragrance that I'm discussing with you today is loyalty. Now, loyalty, guys, is a fragrance that, like I said, was inspired by Ramon Monegal's Flamenco. And although I'm not going to get into the detailed comparison between those two fragrances, I will tell you that this fragrance is clearly inspired by Ramon Monegal's Flamenco. At that, this fragrance is very, very woody. It opens with a great deal of fruits. 
It's also very, very woody and it has a beautifully done violet note, which is the one that adds all the personality and character to this fragrance. In addition to the violet, you find some white florals and a beautifully done rose. I can tell you that the rose in this fragrance was done exactly like it was done in flamenco. This fragrance is also sweet, not very sweet, but it is sweet. I actually find it to be a little bit less sweet than flamenco, but all in all, it's like the perfect amount of sweetness. It also has a green touch to it that gives it like a crispness, which is perfect to be used during this season. In addition to the violet, as I said, there's also the rose and there's also like a very, very nicely done bouquet of white florals. As to be expected in most, if not all, violet and iris fragrances, at the dry down, you are going to have a beautifully done powdery fragrance. Although this fragrance is coming in at number five, so out of the five, this is supposed to be my least favorite, I can tell you that I absolutely love this fragrance. And although I will bring it into one of those videos where I compare it directly with the OG, I can tell you right now that this fragrance is so, so very close to flamenco, if you know what I mean. This is a fragrance that you can use in any season of the year, truly any season of the year for any occasion, day or night. I really believe that flamenco really requires a certain level of maturity because it is also a very sexy uh, fragrance that also commands quite a bit of attention. So I would say that it's best suited for 30 plus. This is a fragrance that has no oud whatsoever, and I would definitely say that this is a unisex fragrance that may lean a tad bit to the feminine side. As far as performance, Loyalty does a wonderful job because, you know, Flamenco is a fragrance that performs very, very well. But here, even though this fragrance has not had a chance to properly macerate, I'm already getting seven hours without having to overspray. I'm also getting a pretty strong projection during the first 90 minutes, so like the first hour and a half, and that's without overspraying. And then after that, it does become a skin scent, but it's a skin scent that does give you whiffs of the fragrance all throughout the day, and one that you will definitely smell on yourself. As far as sillage, this is a fragrance, guys, that will get you compliments every time because that is one of the things that I love about flamenco. It is a very different kind of fragrance. I don't know what is it about it, but the way that it has been done is just exquisite. And this fragrance does not disappoint. I tell you, you are going to get compliments with loyalty. So next, coming in at number four, is a fragrance that was inspired by one of my favorite fragrances from my favorite fragrance house. And of course, I'm sure by now you know that my favorite fragrance house of all time is Zerjoff. And this fragrance, oh my goodness, guys, I just cannot believe that they've been able to really, really get this fragrance to be so, so very close to 1861 Naxos. And this one is Vu Elegant. Now, guys, oh, I don't know if you, oh, I don't know if you remember my reaction when I first sniffed this fragrance. I just was floored. I could not believe that they actually were able to really, really get 1861 Naxos from Zerjoff so, so well done. I mean, Vu Elegant is truly, guys, I mean, I'm not gonna tell you what percent, but I can tell you it is almost 100% Naxos. There are very, very slight differences, which I will share with you in a video in the future, but this fragrance, guys, when I tell you this fragrance is exquisite, it is true perfection. It is a fragrance just like 1861 Naxos that has quite a bit of complexity, which is what makes it fascinating. This is a fragrance that does, in my opinion, require a certain level of maturity to pull it off. So I would definitely say that this is a 30 plus fragrance, but if you have a mature 25 plus year old, they could definitely pull it off. This fragrance opens quite sweet, it has a ton of vanilla. It is a fragrance that has a beautifully balanced combination of the notes of honey and tobacco. 
But in case you're wondering and you're asking me, okay, Arahi, well, you said honey and tobacco. Is this anything like Guerlain's tobacco honey? No, guys, because there's other notes that give this fragrance a complete different path. In addition to the tobacco and the honey, there's a very aromatic quality to this fragrance. Ah, and there's a beautifully done, very, very well-balanced note of lavender that does not overpower at any given time. There's also a freshness to the fragrance, the courtesy of some very, very nicely done citrusy notes. But those citrusy notes are with you in the opening and all throughout the olfactory journey. Once the opening is done, those citrusy notes do take like a, like a back seat in this journey and allow for the florals to step in and command their attention. The vanilla is quite a bit of vanilla and is not a vanilla that is super sweet. There's a sweetness to this fragrance that is definitely inherent in every step of the way, but it's a sweetness that has been balanced very well with all the notes within the fragrance. I would say that that sweetness that you get in the fragrance, which is quite sweet, is a sweetness that is shared between the vanilla and the honey. The tobacco, the tobacco brings such character to this fragrance. This fragrance is not only elegant and sophisticated, but is also a fragrance that borders on sexy. And I dare say that depending on how you pull it off, on how you carry yourself when you're wearing this fragrance, you may end up feeling and looking quite smashingly sexy. This is a fragrance that I really recommend to be used any season of the year. But of course, I really believe that most will tell you that it's best suited for the seasons of like fall, spring, and winter. But I tell you, just like Naxos, this is a fragrance that I definitely think that you can pull off any season of the year. Just make sure that you don't wear this fragrance on a smoldering hot summer day if you're going to be outside. But if you're just going to be transitioning from the outside to the inside and on the inside you're going to have AC, you will be perfectly fine because this fragrance performs beautifully. You can dress up and you can definitely dress down, but it's not one that I would like bring to the gym. It is also a fragrance that I would consider to be unisex. A unisex fragrance that does not lean to the male or to the feminine side. Vue Elegant, just like 1861 Naxos, is a beast. When I tell you that, oh, I just love to sniff this fragrance. When I tell you that you are going to get 10 plus hours from this fragrance without a doubt, and you're going to get a very, very strong projection during the first two hours, after which it does become a scent bubble. And that scent bubble will be with you guys for at least another four hours before it becomes a skin scent. But at no time in any of this journey are you going to stop sniffing yourself. It is just a beast and it is glorious to see the reaction of people around you when you're wearing it because the sillage is around about three feet and it is a sillage that, oh my goodness, will get you so many compliments. Coming in at number three is another fragrance that was also inspired by a Zerjoff fragrance. But I want to assure you that these fragrances, both the one that was inspired by Naxos and this next one that I'm going to share with you, I want to assure you that they're not in those stellar spots because they were inspired by a Zerja fragrance. No, these fragrances, these five fragrances, I selected not just because of the way that they smell, but also because of the way that they make me feel, and most importantly, the way that they perform and the way that they've been blended. So this next one coming in at number three is when I tell you exquisitely done. And I am speaking about Rabab Gems. Now, Rabab Gems was inspired by Zerjoff's Accento. From what you can see, the bottle is purple, uh, just like Zerjoff's. This is a fragrance that is sweet, it is powdery, and oh my goodness, it has such a great deal of personality. And the iris is definitely undeniably there. So you must be an iris lover. This is a musk-based fragrance that also has a touch of like greenness to it but it is like a very fresh fragrance in some way. Even though there's not like a focus on citrusy notes, there is a freshness to this fragrance that I've never been able to understand with Accento and now with Rabab Gems, I'm experiencing the same thing. 
This one is also very close to Zerjov Accentos, and of course, in a future video, I'll be going into full detail on that. But in case you're wondering, they are very, very close. In addition to fresh, spicy, this fragrance also has an earthy quality to it, which gives the fragrance so, so, so much character. And to be honest with you, I've never been able to really figure out where does that earthiness come from, but it is a very nicely done earthiness. And at the beginning, I thought, well, maybe there's some patchouli here, but honestly, I'm not picking up on patchouli at all. I am picking up on some fruitiness, on the iris, and I am picking up on that woodiness. Dominant to my nose, of course, is that powderiness that I know is coming from the iris, but there's also a fruitiness to it that I absolutely love. And then that fresh spiciness is just absolutely glorious. Now, different than Accento, I will tell you this because you must know this, Accento for me is definitely a unisex fragrance. And on my skin, Accento is very, very much a unisex fragrance. I absolutely love it, but it's truly a unisex fragrance that does not lean to the masculine or feminine side. Well, that is one of the differences because with Rabab, you are having a fragrance that does lean, in my opinion, to the feminine side. Do I see a gentleman wearing this fragrance? Absolutely. But you must know that to my nose, it definitely leans feminine. Not a lot, not a tad, it leans feminine. I don't know if you're familiar with the performance of Accento, but I can tell you that compared to other Zerjoff fragrances that I have in my collection, Accento is not a beast mode or a fragrance that has a super performance, to call it something. I mean, it does perform well, but it's not a fragrance that you're going to get 10 hours or even a solid eight hours without overspraying. Same thing with Rabab, guys, because with Rabab, um, I'm getting seven hours. And if I overspray, it does extend that time. But seven hours is truly what I get from this fragrance. And at the seven hour mark, it's already a skin scent. It does have a moderate projection and a moderate sillage, but this is a fragrance that although it does have a moderate sillage, it will get you compliments because it is exquisitely done and it's just such a beautifully complex and like non-common type of scent. This fragrance has absolutely no oud in it and it is a fragrance that I think 25 plus is a good age group. You know that the last two fragrances and sometimes even the three last fragrances in every video are fragrances that although I'm passionate about most of the fragrances that I bring to you, Typically, these fragrances have me on a chokehold. It was really hard for me to decide which one of these two I wanted to place in number one because these two fragrances are just exceptional. This next fragrance was inspired by a Tom Ford fragrance. And let me tell you that from the day I hauled it with you until today, I have not been able to, for the most part, go one day without just having to uncap it and sniff it because it is done to perfection and it is exquisite. And I am speaking about Alwatania's Lazuli. Oh my goodness, guys. This fragrance, this, this, this right here, this is a showstopper. <laughs> oh, this is truly, truly for me, better than Neroli Portofino. And when I do the direct comparison video between Neroli Portofino and this fragrance, I will speak about it chapter and verse, but you know, Neroli Portofino is an exquisite fragrance from Tom Ford, don't get me wrong, but there is something about the citrus notes in this fragrance that just put the fragrance over the top. Just, just, just unbelievable. It is just exquisite. And Neroli Portofino is a fragrance that was originally, right, designed more with males in mind, but of course we ladies use it and we love it. And it's become something very known and very accepted. This one, this one to me is perfectly unisex. And the focus here, much like in Neroli Portofino, is around those citrus notes. And guys, I just pick up everything in this fragrance, every single note, and then some. So when this fragrance opens, oh my goodness. Guys, if you have picked up Lazuli, you have to let me know. If you are getting what I'm getting, because 
This fragrance is just exceptional. This is perfection for the summer. So this opens up with a ton of citrus and zesty notes, and I get them all. I'm getting bitter orange, I'm getting orange, I'm getting lemon, I'm getting bergamot, all of it. And then almost like immediately after that opening, you start to get like little whiffs of orange blossom. And you know what, guys, for me, orange blossom was always a note that was more like not for the summer. You could probably, of course, use it during the fall. Some fragrances, if they had more depth for the winter and then definitely for spring. But until this fragrance, I really did not believe that there could be a level of freshness such as what you find in this fragrance where Orange Blossom is present. And all this fragrance is quite citrusy. It has a beautiful bouquet of white florals because I don't just pick up Orange Blossom. There's other white florals in here, but they're not as dominant as that orange flower, right? And then in addition to that, you are going to find all of those citrus notes and all of that makes the fragrance quite aromatic. There is just such an exquisite touch to this fragrance. I can't say it enough. I am absolutely in love with this fragrance. This fragrance gives you a feel of like if you're in a yacht somewhere uh, on a summer vacation, like you're in a boat and you're dressed with your you know, shorts and your shirt and you're wearing some boat shoes or no shoes whatsoever and you're just sitting there just letting that breeze that you get from the ocean while you know you're just sniffing this fragrance there is a feel to this fragrance and what i love about it is that as soon as you spray it on yourself you feel that way even though you're just home this is a fragrance that i would say is perfect for the seasons of spring and summer, but definitely with a focus on the summer season. But at that, you can dress it down, you can dress it up, but definitely for more of like daytime occasions. If you have an early evening type of event and it will be over before full, you know, like nightfall, I would definitely say that you can pull this off. But this is a fragrance that's definitely designed for warm weather, in my opinion, and for occasions that take place during the day. Is this a fragrance that I would wear to the gym? Probably not. Would I, you know, do some sports with it? Depending on the type of sport and depending on, on, on the occasion. Um, but this is definitely not a fragrance. It's just so, so beautifully done, guys. I, I wouldn't wear this to the gym. But for any other occasion, I think it is perfection. Now, let's talk about performance because that is one of the things that just... Honestly, I just could not believe it. So Neroli Portofino from Tom Ford is a fragrance that in my opinion lacks in the performance area. I can never get from Neroli Portofino more than five, five and a half hours without having to overspray. And when I was using it, I would just bring a decant and respray, which honestly at that level of a fragrance and the price point of that fragrance, that is to me unacceptable. But with this fragrance, Oh my goodness, guys, this fragrance is bordering on beast. This is a fragrance that without having to overspray, I am getting eight plus hours truly. And if I overspray, you are going to get 10 plus hours for sure. And if you spray your garments with this fragrance, the scent will linger until you launder them. This is one of those fragrances that is so intense that when you spray it on your skin, even if you shower, you may still get a whiff of the fragrance even after you shower, unless you really, really scrub it off. This has a very strong projection for the first two plus hours and has a very strong sillage also that needless to say, guys, will get you a ton of compliments because this fragrance, which is very important that you know, is one of those fragrances that scream, I have arrived. There is something about the way they've done those citrus and zesty notes. I keep saying that because that's, that's the game changer in this fragrance. There's something about the way they've done it where without losing its freshness and without being cloying, this fragrance is a true powerhouse. This fragrance not only demands, but it commands attention, if you know what I mean. People will turn around and want to know 
who is wearing that scent that they're picking up on. All right, guys. So the last fragrance that I have for you today, I, I have to tell you. So this fragrance does not even perform uh, on par to lazuli, right? It, it doesn't perform. It's not beast mode, right? But this is a fragrance that I just could not help it. I had to put it in the number one spot because when I tell you this fragrance is just perfection. I don't know what is it about this fragrance. I, I just, I, I don't even understand um, because I really tried to maybe rank it down a little bit, not because of anything, but because other fragrances from this five group are really, really incredible. But this fragrance, oh no, there was no way that I could not place it in the number one spot. And I am speaking about Zemaya's Hawa Red. Oh my goodness, guys, if you have this fragrance, if you've tried it, can you please let us know your thoughts? So this fragrance is supposed to be inspired by Dior's Rouge Trafalgar. And that's a fragrance that I have sniffed. I don't have it in my collection, um, but I did have a decant of it and I did enjoy it. But you know, then you get into other fragrances and you tend to forget. But I really believe, and, and I would have to pick it up again, or I would have to get myself a decant to compare it directly. And I will for a future video because I'm just very curious. But if I recall correctly, there is something about this fragrance that I, I did not find in Rouge Trafalgar that has made me fall head over heels for this one versus Rouge Trafalgar. Now, did I like Rouge Trafalgar? Yes, I did. I do remember that I liked it, but I guess I didn't like it enough to pay the price of the Dior bottle. But this fragrance, oh my goodness, guys, unbelievable. Let me just tell you, this fragrance does not get complicated. It is not linear, but it just does not get complicated. It is very simple. This fragrance is very fruity, very, very fruity. It is sweet, touch of citrusness to it, and it also has some woodiness, which adds oomph and character to the fragrance. Other than that, guys, that is what this fragrance is. But for some reason, it's the way they've done the blend. And I always tell you that because that makes such a difference. There's just something in this fragrance. Now, when it comes to that fruitiness, let me tell you what I do pick up, right? So I do pick up clearly on strawberry. I also wonder if there's a hint of champagne in this fragrance because there's a freshness that comes from like an effervescent type of quality but it's not listed in the notes at all. But I do pick up on strawberry very, very clearly. And there's almost like a hint of cherry in here. I'm not picking up on any other of those red type of fruits, but I am picking up clearly on the strawberry, which is pretty present. And I am picking up on like a hint of cherry. In addition to that, I do get some mandarin and I also get some grapefruit. And those two are the ones that for me bring in that freshness. This fragrance is also quite musky, but those woody notes have been done very nicely with that musk. So interestingly enough, I know that in the note structure there is some patchouli, but I really don't pick up on the patchouli and I also don't pick up on the kind of standard or to be expected earthiness that patchouli brings to a fragrance. No matter how I've tried, I just don't get patchouli. I'm telling you from the beginning, what I told you is all that I get. I get that fruitiness, I get that citrusness, I get the woody notes, and I get that musk base for sure. But I am not getting that patchouli note, which is really, really interesting to me because I've told you in the past that patchouli is a note that I always pick up on if present. In addition to that, yes, I do pick up on vanilla, but the musk for me takes over. The vanilla is not like the main character here or one of the key characters in the fragrance. Again, I'm getting that fruitiness. I am picking up on some of those citrus notes and I am getting that musk. I'm not really picking up on patchouli. And then there's that effervescent quality that I am clearly picking up on that doesn't like match to any of the notes that have been shared. 
This is a fragrance that although it's perfection for the summer, I really think that you could pull this off all throughout the year. So for me, this is a fragrance that you can dress down, you can dress up for any occasion that you like and for any season of the year. Please keep in mind that this fragrance has not had a chance to macerate, but at that it is getting me seven plus hours and I typically have to overspray to extend it over that seven hour mark. The projection is moderate and the sillage is moderate, but curiously enough, it is a fragrance that does get attention. So you are going to get compliments. This is also one that I think is best suited for 25 plus and I would say there is absolutely no oud here. All in all, guys, I have to tell you that I just absolutely love, love, love this fragrance. All right, guys, so we've reached the end of today's video, and I hope that this was as much fun for you as it was for me, because although it wasn't easy to select just five fragrances out of those 20 something fragrances that we've hauled, I can tell you that I feel very, very confident that if you try any of these fragrances, you are going to fall in love. Please keep in mind that you do need to give them time to macerate. So these fragrances have been with me for at least a month and you know, they are fragrances that do need time to macerate. They also, the five that I have, have not gone through the entire process of maceration yet. So at some point, Point, I will come back to you with my thoughts after maceration, but as it is, I'm already highly impressed and very much in love with them. As always, thanks so much for hanging with me today, and I will see you in the next video.